school is on the south corner of the new university quarter. It's facing the Oxford University Press on Walton Street, so our building is particularly a gateway into the main body of the university quarter. We chose a cylindrical building form to occupy as little footprint as possible, as opposed to a rectangular courtyarded building form, which would spread out a bit more on the site and form more of an obstacle. From the exterior, the building appears like a series of stacked discs. And internally, that language is repeated as well, except that the discs are drilled through with this open space in the center. The holes through the discs also are slightly shifted in relation to each other, so you create this overlapping terracing effect. So you're not presented with a sheer opening in the middle, but a series of subtly moving planes which allow you to get perspectives from one floor to the other and be able to see people across the distances in the building. The core values of the Blavatnik School of Government emphasize transparency, communication and exchange. We felt that this should be reflected in the main heart of the building and this is the forum space which is the space behind me now. We wanted the forum space to feel light and open and have this soaring quality to it, but also at the same time to have a solidity and a depth of material. Concrete also is a material which has a great tradition in Oxford, as well as the more traditional Oxford limestone, which we also pay tribute to in the facade and the concrete of the facade. The geometry of the building is derived by the expansion and contraction of the floor plates and by the movement of the walls as we, st as, we, as we stack and move around. To undertake that, we considered the building as a series of stacked plates, and by those expanding and contracting and the movement of the walls, we could change the character of the space. To do this, we used a series of walking walls. These work by walls passing across each other and stacking and walking both in and out and back in again in order to change the geometry of the space. The walls, however, are more than simply a deep beam and are fundamentally out of balance and would topple without much greater consideration. We resolve this by using the floors to hold them back in place. As a result, what we see around the forum of the building is the ribbons of floor extending towards the centre of the forum while seeing no vertical structure behind. And this is really fundamental to the elegance of the building. Concrete was the natural choice. We're very fond of it as a building material because it exhibits such a characterful degree of tone and consistency, but at the same time, it's got the potential for exuberance for this sort of athletic materiality within this space which we really wanted to play into. Staircases are a key feature of the building and really characterise many of the spaces, from the shortcut stair with its tight helix through to the epic grand stair which forms the centre of the forum. This stair is particularly interesting from an engineering point of view because it's both supported by and supports the half landing. The cantilever of the ground floor is so great that the stair actually acts as a very flat inclined curved column and the balustrade of the stair supports the landing while the landing supports the stair. The ribbon of the balustrade then continues up through the entire building. Within that you'll see the white render which is actually a, an almost foam-like acoustic material. The majority of concrete in the building is in situ. The one aspect that isn't in situ is the academic stairs, which is a corkscrew spiral stairs which runs up from level one to the top of the building. It was actually precast on site and dropped into place in a series of pieces through the opening at the top of the tube. This enabled a pretty good saving in terms of program and also showed us really what is achievable in precast as well as in situ. It feels as though a solid piece which has been carved out and, and polished back, the, the solidity of the space is really quite striking. We did a number of trial panels to get the consistency of the concrete correct and the tone as well was very important. We used uh, GGBS in the mix, uh, about 40%, which was important to us because it gave it a slightly creamier tone than a very cement-rich mix. It was also important that we got the shuttering methodology right with our contractor, Langer Rourke. We wanted it to be a very simple pour with flush edges and sharp arises. We didn't want to introduce too many chamfers or checks or rebates to interrupt the material consistency or face of the concrete finish. To avoid spotting on the soffits of concrete, from coalescing oil. We looked at four or five different techniques for oil application to make it both thin and very evenly distributed. And that was the first time I'd seen that kind of attention to detail. But the second was even more extraordinary, which was that you weren't allowed to walk on the formwork without wearing slippers. 
The, the risk of having a stone in someone's shoe which would scratch the former and result in a kind of inflected scratch in, in, in the concrete was too great to bear and that, that, that really kind of characterised the, the kind of love and care that went into the building. It's always nice as an engineer to, to feel that what you've done is actually on show and here absolutely everything's on show. All the way down to the real fine geometry and the crisp edges that we see. We love concrete as a material, we think it's um, flexible and adaptable and for this building the concrete finish delivers exactly what we wanted the building to achieve, to give the solidity and weight of a concrete while at the same time achieving these acrobatic and dramatic gestures is, is, is where we wanted to arrive at.